everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. The weeks are flying by and it's almost time for Terry Moore Live. And Terry's busy sketching and working on Serial Issue 8. We're busy in the warehouse getting out the Echo and Rachel Rising hardcovers that can now, um, you can now order in the store. And we have Serial 7 in hand and it will go out to subscribers this week. It will be in stores on September 29th, so remember that. Lots going on around here. Um, since Terry's sketching like crazy, maybe you guys can send him your ideas. He's, uh, he's needing some inspiration. That would be good. Okay, so needless to say, Terry Moore Live is two weeks away. We'll have live panels, book sales, and lots and lots of sketches. We'll post a schedule this week so you guys can make plans. We're also going to be doing Studio Sunday Live on the 3rd. So I can't wait to see everyone. Okay, we've had lots of inquiries uh, regarding conventions this year, in particular New York Comic Con and San Diego Special Edition. Terry is not scheduled for any shows until next year, so no Baltimore Comic Con, no New York Comic Con, no Comic Con Special Edition, but we are scheduled to be at San Diego Comic Con next year in July if they have an in-person event. So um, we'll keep you informed as things change. Um, do you have anything else to add, Mr. Moore? I don't. Um, it's all about the sketches now and looking forward to Terry Moore Live. Sounds strange to say my own name, but the October 1 through 3 live event. And I'll be there. <laughs> okay, well, let's get on the hot seat then. The first okay. question is from Michael Cross. He says, I just finished uh, a reread of the entire SIP saga. Still amazing if you weren't sure. One of the things that I was surprised about, again, was that Casey was working for Tamby. Was that planned the whole time or something that came up later as you were working on the series? Okay, first off, spoilers. <laughs> but you should have read the book by now. Um, no, it, honestly, in, on day one of the Casey idea, it was we just needed a rebound girlfriend for Freddie. And the reason it was Casey and the way Casey looks and the way Casey acts was because Francine had already, just already described Casey to Freddie, like my biggest fear, Freddie, is that you're gonna dump me in, for a, an aerobics instructor, you know, that's perky and the opposite of me. And so when it was time to introduce Casey, that's exactly who Freddie was dating. Um, so it was kind of like, you know, uh, just a very quick humorous thing. But Casey turned out to be so interesting that she stayed in the story. Characters can do that sometimes. And she um, developed into more depth and depth. And as things began to develop in the story and get complicated with Tambi, uh, I realized what a great Parker girl. And, but not a real Parker girl, but more like a volunteer. I worked in the office. I would love to do something in the field. <laughs> so that's how it ended up. I thought it was a great uh, little twist at the end to, to have that come out for real on the table when everybody's sitting around the table. And it gave them a reason, gave me a reason for Tambi and Casey to actually have some history and to be close and end up um, very, very close at the end. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Now let's go on to question two. What type of lighting do you have on your drawing board? Does it change if you're penciling or inking? The light I have is just the standard um, that you get at the art store, but it does have a bulb and a, and a neon, depending on whether I need cool light or warm light. Um, and that has that depends on what the time of day is, really. Um, and I don't know, it's just really good and really strong, and it stays in place, you know, unless you get it too far there. So, yeah, it's just the standard light. I noticed that when I was in the art store a couple of days ago that they do have lights that have shorter arms. You don't have to get this long arm, but I have a big table. Um, and uh, it's been very faithful. This is probably only my second or third light in all these years. So they last a long time. And do you use a different light for inking than you do for penciling? No, I don't. I just use whatever makes the good ambient light. Um, if I feel like the table is getting too yellow, say at dusk, um, the, the, everything starts getting more yellow here, then I can pop on the fluorescent light and get the uh, cool light. And then the warm light is good for the day. 
because it blends in with the sun. No, it's, it doesn't matter whether it's pencil or ink. Okay. Okay, well, that's it for me. I hope you guys have a peaceful and fulfilling week, and I'll meet you back here next Sunday. What are you drawing today, Terry? Um, today I am drawing, I'm launching off this doodle. I, I had a doodle that I found, you know, I had these pages like this, where I just do a lot of doodling on the page. And I will see something like this, and I think that's a good pose, and then that turned into this. So I use the doodles to inspire me to do the next thing, to do a better drawing. So I'm gonna use this one and draw it here and you can watch me make that work. Okay. Sound good? Um, okay, meet me here. Okay, so this is a blow up of the doodle uh, at the size. I wanted to blow it up on Photoshop to be sure that it would fit well inside here. And it does. That's how I'm going to do it on, on the real page. This comes from a doodle on a sketch page. I cut it out of the notebook. Um, but this was the original doodle, just in pencil. You can see it's just a pencil drawing on the page. And just a bunch of stupid cartoons underneath it and on the back of the page. Um, I don't know why I was drawing polar bears, especially a polar bear with a cigar. So this is this is the one. So what I'm gonna do, I really want this to sit like right there, but I don't wanna tear up that page anymore. So here, this is what Xeroxes are for. I'll put it right there and I can kind of you know keep the pose in mind as I draw. So let's put it right there. Okay. Um, I've already kind of laid out the body uh, in the proportions, but there's a danger in that once you lay out the body and do the head last, uh, you have a real risk of not getting the head proportion correct to the body. Because once you start drawing the head, you get into the details and it changes the head size a little bit. And then when you look at the big thing, your head doesn't match your body anymore. So the way around this is to fix it at this stage. Um, I just get it laid out. The head's going to go somewhere right in here. And now what I do is I will just focus on the head, forget the body, focus on the head, and then redraw the body according to what head size I end up with. Um, does that sound a little backwards? The um, thing is, is that the, the, the whole body proportion, uh, for me, really goes off, keys off the head. Okay, so I'm just going to focus on drawing a good face in this position. And then I'm going to put the body underneath it. And I'm not, I'm not warmed up. I can tell, like, when I have to pull the pencil this way, this thumb right here, the muscle um, has been wearing out a little bit or getting a little twitchy from drawing and being in this position a lot. It's easier to, it's easier to do it this way than to pull it. See the little line? So you compensate for that um, when the time comes, when it's time to make the real line. I won't be pulling like that. I'll be doing a different stroke. Um, I'll get around or something. Okay, I'm just getting the features in spot. It's a lot easier to change and revise these features and fix them than it is to place them. That's basically it. Did you notice in the in the sketch that uh, none of this lines up. If you line up the eyes, if you line up the eyes, then this whole bottom half of the face is too far to the right. If you line up that face line, look how off that, <clears throat> look how high that eye is. That eye should be right there. You know, you get away with things like that in a cartoon sketch. Um, it's funny how you can get away with stuff like that. But when it's time to draw the real Francine, uh, no. This, this is going to have to line up, and it's going to have to line up that way. So all I'm doing now is placing the top lid, uh, get a little more assertive with where the features lie, get your 
that just the point of the pupil, where is she looking? Right there. Okay, and realize that the straight line is here, is the straight line is you know at an angle. So the straight line to the middle of the top lip, and then key underneath that eye, pupil, pupil, right there. Dun, dun. Okay, now it doesn't look like Francine yet. That will come in the details. Um, right now, the top lip is too low, too long. You can either fix that with more top lip or you can move this up a little bit. Everything's gonna be adjusted. The main thing right now is, do you have level eyes with pupils pointing where they need to be, with a nose the length that it's supposed to be, and the mouth where it's supposed to be side to side and height-wise? And the answer is yes. I did not have that a minute ago. Okay, now define just where the edge of the face is, the chin, the back of the jawbone, jawbone like that. And then if there's extra weight, it's gonna be down in there. But right now I'm worried about the jawbone, not the weight. Sideburns, so to speak. And then the hairline, and the hairline is there. Okay, that face looks like it's going to, that face size looks like it's going to match. Um, get that rough drawn hair out of there because it looked like a little too high. She's not from 10, well, she actually, she is from Tennessee. <laughs> she can have high hair if she wants. I associate that with uh, Grand Ole Opry, you know, the hairstyle. That may be old school now, huh? I should say um, the 50s Bebop, uh, Mars Attacks, uh, the Go-Go's. It's kind of come back. That hair's come back. Well, it came back and went. <laughs> okay, uh, now it's about the collarbone, um, neck down, collarbone. Um, what is that? The trapezius, the trapeze, right? And notice that um, if you go straight down, it's one thing, but if you go out, you have a more feeling of weight. That's why I hang on to these. Um, because sometimes in the sketch you just nail it. So we're not going to go straight down. We come out, and that's how you get the weight. And then you define the floor. The floor is there. Length, length, hand. Rib cage, soft abdominum, abdomen, abdominum. That sounds like how the Brits would say it. In your abdominum. Controversy about your dominant Contro controversy. Yeah, that's how they say it. Okay, um, this is tricky here because you want the arm to go back, which means the shoulder is not going to be fully represented. With as much shoulder as you have on the, this side, it won't be quite the level thing because then you would be facing straight at us, shovels, uh, shoulders level. So there is meant to be a bit of a fade away on that right there. And the elbow joint is behind. And then it comes up and the hand's going to sit on the hip. So... Now I turn, slowly I turn, step by step. Okay, um, and now you're actually trying to get that hip, um, hip bone assembly to lay on the ground and everything else follows around it. So it's something like that. And how long is the thighs on the tall girl? This is Francine, they're about like that. And then Long as usually people have longer thighs than um, shins, but on tall people, the shins are just as long. Uh, there's a balance there, and that is definitely Francine.
tall girl. She's probably 5'11". Okay, this is tricky too. If you draw this leg completely straight, it looks stupid. There is a slight bend uh, as well on the bottom leg. Okay, just eyeballing it roughly, um, that's kind of it. That's where we're going. And that's how, what it would look like if she stood up. So there's the turn, so to speak. Do things look still look right when you turn it? And I think, yeah, it does. Distance from here to here, the bottom of, the, bottom of the rib cage, uh, to belly button, to crotch. That is so key. Uh, tighten any of this up and then you, you're drawing just suddenly it makes the head look way too big or something. You get proportion problems. It's going to be something like that. You see where I'm going? Uh, I was thinking on this hand, it's going to come up here. And instead of, instead of doing that stupid old playboy pose, um, I'm going to have her hold um, a martini glass. And in the martini glass, is going to be a, a martini glass fixin' like that. Again, that's kind of playboyish, isn't it? But I thought it'd be cute. It's better than looking at her laying on a rug. Uh, there's got to be something going on. Um, okay, that's the rough sketch. Um, so I'm going to go after it. How far would, gosh, we're already 12 minutes in. Um, it would take me another 20 minutes to really dial this in. So we'll see. Um, I may have to put this on speed draw. Um, I'm gonna record it and then we'll just see how long we end up and the drawing section itself I may have to do on speed dial. Okay. To get in there and do these details right, I'm switching from um, the fat two <laughs> to the O5, you know, my green pencil. So uh, I can get in there and really kind of narrow down some of these details. I'm looking at it right now and I can already see that the eye is a little high. It's still high. Welcome to my world. See that? If I get the straight line on the face, the center line of the face, there's the center line of the face. So there's an eyeball. There's the other eyeball. Oh. So this is the kind of thing you have to catch right now. And the way I do it is to draw now draw the bottom line. Where's the bottom line for the eyes? It's right there. If you ignore the, if you ignore my bad points, that's straight. Okay, that's weird looking. That'd be a fun drawing. This is over to this side a little bit, so this one needs to be over to this side a little bit. And now she's looking over our shoulder to the side, which is not what we want, we want her looking at us. Now she's looking to the right. See how um, pinpoint this has to be? Look at us. Directly at us. Okay, she is looking at us. I'm gonna lock it in. There's a lot of lead right there, which is gonna keep it from looking white. So use the soft eraser to get rid of that, all that soft extra lead there. Get this tuned in. You know, uh, the 
pupil is often really just under that top lid for most normal expressions. Adding that bottom um, with what looks like a lot of mascara suddenly makes it look a lot more like big-eyed, you know, cheesy. I may have to soften that. I like to make it so that Francine looks more natural than that. It's not like she put on a, a ton of top and bottom makeup. She's not in high school. And same for the mouth. Um, I give it some color, but I don't, I don't make it black and polished and shiny like um, date night. Okay, I know that the hairline's about there, so I'm dropping bangs off this hairline. And now I can switch back to this guy because those little fine lines are become annoying when you're trying to do bigger objects like hair. Might be good to do something to break up the head up here. So this is why I've been adding um, hair, headbands on Francine lately, just to break it up. You know what? I just realized I'm kind of doing a Playboy homage here anyway, aren't I? Because there's going to look a little bit like bunny ears. And then we've got this classic Playboy pose, and then we're going to have the martini girl and I mean my gosh that's just 1960s all over again so let's just have fun with that I mean I'll put her in capri pants and everything you know and that way we can do a cute homage without actually doing um, the stupid parts of that legacy much, much cuter than it was a moment ago, isn't it? Um, I can still dial some things in here. Um, the width of the eye, for instance, all that. You can see that areas I remove the unwanted stuff, uh, the face comes to you. You begin to see it. Oh, okay, there's the Francine we know. And a soft under chin. We are, uh, speaking in the uh, collective Francine and me, we are about 25 pounds overweight. Thank you very much. Thanks for asking. Never mention it again. So, yeah, I love having that little right there. Don't mention it to her. I'm very sensitive about it. She's working on it. Your comments do not help. Okay, I'm going to lock in where the clothes are. And let's make this one of those really fun striped shirts, uh, like a boat shirt, you know, with that crew. Uh, is that a crew collar? I honestly don't know the name of it. But the short sleeve and the broad stripes like that. Like somebody invited her out on the sailboat for the day. This pose does give you the chance to see the beautiful effects of gravity on the body. Um, It's too concave. There's a muscle there, there, like that. It's 
See the wavy? That's because I'm not warmed up. This is my first drawing of the day. So. This is what all the iced tea and Dr. Pepper are for. Wake up, Terry. Get your hands and your muscles limber again. Uh, when you're drawing every day, um, you wake up and your your hand is sore and all that. So get it, it's like your other other parts in the body when you're when you're moving it and exercising and stuff. I guess this is some sort of hand exercise of some sort. Capri pants. Like we went to the Newport Jazz Festival today in the drawing, not me. Lots of sailboats. I do want to go to the Newport Jazz Festival someday. And there's the ankle bone, the outside ankle bone. The kneecaps are here. Shin and the other ankle, inside ankle bone. And the heel is back in here, and the foot. You really just have to be able to see it 3D. You can, I, I can see the heel back in here. The inside of the bone, is the leg is here, there's the ankle bone. This, this ankle bone is higher than this one, the other one is right in there, so there's a bit of an angle. And then the heel is back in here, and then the instep, and then the ball of the foot, and then the toe itself, and then the you know the rest of the toes, and then this guy comes here, and the instep rides on the side of that instep, like that, ankle bone, and the other heel is back behind. So you're not just drawing what you see; you're drawing what you can't see as well. Uh, when I put this here, I know what the backside looks like. I know where those cheek lines are and all that. It influences what you do up here. And there's the belly button is going to be right in there. We're not going to see it. Like that. And this shirt is going to have um, broad... Blue and white. If it was in color, it would be blue and white. Cute, huh? Hand comes up. It'd be cute if I are cute. Be good. And I'm drawing the back side of the hand, and this is the knuckle part right here comes over and it's only the, these three fingers and then this one is back a little bit. And then that is actually on the stem of the glass, that thumb. So the stem is here. And there is the base, the stem. And the world's biggest martini glass. And then like a Kixie nymph in here. That's it. That's where we're going. Okay. So I've been drawing for 23 minutes and that's usually about as long as I can get away with on an art thing. But um, you just saw me uh, grab it from scratch um, at using my, the doodle and the real fine scene. So doodles are good. It was it was not a waste of time to draw that cartoony doodle. Um, I'm going to polish this up, and it'll probably take me another. I'll calm my hand down so where it's nice and smooth. It's looking pretty steady, and finish this out, and then I'll post it later today on social media. Thanks, guys. I hope you. Uh, I hope this was helpful in some way. If you're trying to draw stuff like this as well, and uh, you do best what you do most. So if you want to get better and better at your drawing, draw more. Uh, okay, see you next week. Bye.